Shri Mr. Narayanan, uh, my co-speaker and panelist today, uh, Mr. Gino Kurian, who facilitated for me to address all of you, uh, Dean Professor Bismi, other important dignitaries, participants. It's a pleasure to be with you all today. Frankly speaking, it would have been a greater pleasure if you have physically invited me to Kerala because there is one place I will never say no, you know, if some invitation comes. Because I think, you know, it's not just me. I think uh, not only the expat Keralaites, all over people love to come to Kerala. But as you said that we need to wait for good times to turn back to come to Kerala. Otherwise, my connection with um, Kerala has been through my friends in Chennai. And uh, also, I have roamed almost many streets in Trivandrum and Cochin. You know, after my degree, when I was doing a lot of freelancing work, trying to, you know, earn something uh, in the sense because uh, I was quite defiant with my father, as every first son will be normally, and trying to earn money. So I did some market research survey, which led me to go to every small gully in Trivandrum as well as Cochin. So I had a fairly good idea, which I'm telling about three decades back. After that, uh, you know, a lot of evolution in life. And then I've been uh, coming there for on and off, you know, to in, including the Vikram Sarabhai uh, Institute to deliver mostly my lectures were on intellectual property rights and, you know, internet law. And I do have some great friends, academics, uh, you know, who are uh, even working with me and others who are connected with Kerala. So it would have been a great pleasure when I got this uh, invite from Mr. Gino Korean that I did not... Uh, think much and hesitate much, I said yes. But as obviously when he said about, um, when I said any topic, I was just keeping one topic in my mind, which is about media. How is that connected? I had some history behind it. I tried for my master's in journalism, when way back after my degree, I did not get a seat. That is Madras University used to have about 10 to 12 seats. And they asked me to get a sponsorship from a newspaper much before joining so that I can get a seat. But hardly I knew there are only two papers in Chennai at that time, the very dominant and uh, omnipresent Hindu paper. And then there used to be an evening paper called Mail, and uh, which has stopped long back. And uh, I went and the Gurkha did not even allow me inside. So I did not get any sponsorship. So my media dream evaporated. I joined my master's in public administration, then into law, all that. But later on, I had a great opportunity to work with media when uh, I was in National Law School of India, where I started my career under Dr. Madhu Menon, who is another uh, distinguished Keralaite, who has been my mentor when I joined here in, in National Law School, Bangalore. And then I left National Law School. I wouldn't pretend great ideology because the money was very less those days in academics. I could not really meet ends in Bangalore. So I thought I, that was an attractive offer from a business journal, which asked me to come and join with them. So I did go and join with the business journal uh, as a kind of a kind of a, they do not give designation, they said correspondent. And then probably I, in the, uh, and I grew up in the ranks and became an editor within a few years. And then I was a little tired of uh, uh, journalism. Then I went to come back to law school. And again, I joined back in law school in the late 90s. And when I joined back, there's a different director now, Dr. Mitra, who told me that you have been exposed to media why don't you start a media law center and also try to use your media network to do some legal workshops, etc. So that was another way of, you know, sustaining. So in a way, I was in practically into media, like uh, everyday humdrum of media running around, uh, competing with the, your own colleagues within the journal. It is not even outside competition. You have to find your own space of trying to compete with your own editor about, you know, give me some place to write. And then you also have to compete with others outside. That was a very, what I call as a, a very, very, very doggy dog world. But when I went back to do the media law studies, etc., that gave me a different insight about my practical experience. I took uh, some leaf out of that. And then we started doing a center for media law. Of course, it did not sustain long. One of the reasons uh, I moved out to Nalsar University in Hyderabad. There were no much takers in that area. But that has been always there with me, the question about media, media law. And that has been part and parcel of my life, apart from your 
quote unquote law professor, always you read media, you try to understand, analyze, and then probably start thinking about it. And that's how research happens. So in that context, I proposed to Mr. Gino that I will do this topic. That he said, uh, fine. Then he did ask me, sir, this is Ambedkar Memorial Lecture. Uh, will there be a connect? Then I said, I don't need to talk about Dr. Ambedkar and, you know, in the sense as a personality. But as I said, when you say Dr. Ambedkar, obviously everybody talks about law. Every lawyer knows about it. Everybody who in constitution knows about Dr. Ambedkar. And there is always a connect between media, constitution, and Dr. Ambedkar. But this connect, how far is something interesting, which triggered me to little bit think after accepting this topic, because every time you keep thinking about uh, a, a kind of dimension. And so that is what I'm going to present to you next, maybe 20, 25 minutes, to keep your time intact with uh, my co-panelists also going to speak. So this is how I'm going to do. Now, what I'm going to do is, but uh, I, I do hope that um, I have the facility to share the slides. It is easier sometimes to follow, right? Yes, sir. Uh, okay. I got this arrow mark. Uh, so Google I use much less, right? Uh, I go to what I call a screen. Am I right? Yeah. Present now, sir. Okay. Present now. I understand. I've done that few times. Uh, now let me share the screen and you can yeah. let me know whether the screen is shared yeah it is shared but not in the uh now it is in the slideshow mode yeah it's yeah. clear thank you so much thank you so uh, let me go through this slide and then uh, maybe at the end of that uh, we can have a little interaction or however the organizers are planning the interaction so i just gave the title media conundrum in modern times conundrum is something a churning out what happens so let me begin as uh, this is Ambedkar Memorial Lecture. Let me start with a quote from Dr. Ambedkar. This is often quoted. This, interestingly, was not now. We are talking about a few decades, five, six decades back. Journalism in India was once a profession. It has now become a trade. Never has the interest of the country been sacrificed so senselessly for the propagation of hero worship. This was told long back. I need not bring in a fresh quote in today's world. I leave it to you to judge. It is not just I'm talking some outside Neta. You, me are now part of self-propagation one way or the other. I think our craze for selfie will explain that suddenly we not only have heroes outside and we start having a hero worship of oneself. Is there anything wrong being hero worship or not is another question. We'll come and analyze a little bit there. Now, if I look at Ambedkar, he's a relegated media contributor in the outside world. Because when you say Dr. Ambedkar, you think something else. Nobody talks generally about his intense connect with media. In fact, he understood as a, pub, as a person, as a social reformer, as a constitutional expert and also representing a segment which at that point of time you can understand what could have been the situation even this fig leaf of constitutional cover was not there we are talking about six decades time where openly it's flouted today also it is flouted but much more secretively than he thought that is the best way to you know really address and bring so he is really talking about a newspaper which is two, three, he started Muknayak, Bashirat Bharat, Samta, and Prabuddha Bharat, all that. And the why I said relegated media contributor, if I ask his contemporary Gandhi, everybody knows what Gandhi's newspaper and what a celebrity a writer he was. But here we only tell that Dr. Ambedkar means constituent assembly debates and constitution. And this particular facet is never a part of discussion. Is it uh, inadvertently happening or is it deliberate? Again, I will only not give my opinion on that. I leave it to the audience to take a cue. Now, in supporting of intercaste marriage in 1927, he writes this. At that point of time, 
there was an incident and all the media was being for the blood of this intercaste marriage people you know pro propagandist at that point of time he writes in in his bharat that conjugal union and criticizing those who oppose interfaith marriages he stated that interfaith marriages should be promoted this is i'm talking 1927 transport yourself in a time machine you will understand what was the situation around of course he had other contemporaries all over india i could remember from tamil nadu you know uh, it was ivera periyar who was even vehemently you know what you call as a posing caste system and he was another you know different type of reformer parallelly to dr ambedkar you know happening in tamil nadu now this is one of the just a snippet for you to connect this memorial lecture with the topic what we are giving ambedkar speaks each day our people are suffering under authoritarianism with no consideration and discrimination those who are not covered in the newspapers by a planned conspiracy the newspapers are involved in full fledged silencing of the view please remember he is not talking about the british and the indians he is talking about a set of indians right who are suffering from another set of indians and this is what he attacks the mainstream press that it, that is why he is often said i am not talking about transferring of power from one elite to another elite but it should be real transfer and people who have been subjected to centuries has to be mitigated and this he has very lucidly put it you and i know the eloquent constituent assembly note but the new thing when you go into media and ambedkar and look many of these things you will really see the ambedkar who is outside is uh, smilingly accepting the task given to him of you know uh, drafting the modern constitution but he has his own pain as himself as a part of an oppressed group now connecting ambedkar to media this is where i wanted to connect when mr gino said the constitution and ambedkar are synonymous in indian legal circles ambedkar and dalits are misplaced synonyms because ambedkar is not considered as a pan india leader mahatma gandhi is rightfully right i am not going to tell it is ambedkar versus gandhi but ambedkar when it comes we say that he is a hero to a group which is in my opinion a misplaced synonym ambedkar and journalism is totally blacked out fact in india and media how many could even you know talk about this our forget about common person about any media talking i don't see that so to understand this whole thing about i call the dots connect the dots of what the person called ambedkar stood for where does he come from and what does he represent at a point of time what was the larger discourse and the social map of this country and then connect it with another word called media which we often call as a fourth pillar the three powers of separation which is again you know ambedkar and constitution when we talk separation of powers and then we talk about fourth pillar we call it as a watchdog but is it really a fourth pillar is it really a watchdog one needs to bit of history when has to take i would like to quote this john hofsess is a canadian writer and an activist for right to die very interesting he says the demi world of journalism is like the fun house mirrors that one finds on carnival midways in one reflection you are too fat in another absurdly thin in another with flat head another without a head bizarre reflections without resemblance most times of what is your real image this you must have seen in our village level you know exhibitions there is a small tent they'll keep some different glasses when you look you get into that as a child we all enjoy laugh and come out so that's what he says fun house mirrors is okay but real life distortions or rare is rarely a joke in real life what happens the whole society is media a mirror in the carnival or is it media really mirroring things and this is where again i am connecting the dot of fourth estate you call fourth pillar and in constituent uh, assembly debates or constitution and what dr ambedkar whom we are remembering in one way in human rights day but interestingly i want you all to know few things the it was originally a private initiative 
not what we called as fourth pillar or watchdog. It was basically in the 300 years back, when you're looking at the shipping companies, which are touching their colonial ports, they were giving a tabloid. The tabloid will contain what the ship, next ship will bring. Next ship, how much space it has to take things back. So it's all between what we call in modern times B2B, business to business. It was nothing much. But when you write a tabloid, you don't fill up everything. There are gaps. When there are gaps, they started putting, you know, what you call as some news item. So originally, the media starts as an advertisement tabloid. And in between, they start putting something about UK or Netherlands, whichever may be the colonial country. And these kind of tabloids started coming, putting some news about the happenings in our the place of our masters. So this slowly what happens, it becomes fourth estate. Slowly that news catches more people. A lot of people who have no connection with this business start reading and then it starts emerging. When it emerged, even in the West, it paid a heavy price. For example, William Cobet was imprisoned for an article long back. The tradition continues even today. They even tried to put a stamp duty so that they call that very, very, very interesting tax on knowledge, right? They want to tax knowledge. So it looks like taxing is something which will be done everywhere and anywhere for anything. So, but over a period, a lot of water has flown down, you know, in, in the West, in UK, under Thames or in Ganges or anywhere in this country, then you really find, yeah, I call that a behemoth or a conglomerate has developed. That conglomerate brings in various sectors, not necessarily about politics, not necessarily about uh, public issues. It brought sports, lifestyle, religion, science, technology, name it. Now, if I look at the disseminating, what this, this media is, what it's supposed to do, what it ought to be, let us look at one analysis. The word media is a plural of media. It mediates between whom? That is the question between public power holders and power generators. If you call their fourth estate, they are a holy cow when we say what role they should play. The role is between power holder and power generator. Power holder, you know, periodic governments, different governments come and governments have executive, all the judiciary, everything is part of power holder. A professor, an institution, you know, all we are all power holders. There are power generators, which means people who put you in power. So I can be a power holder as well as a power generator. I will also vote for a government as well as I may be discharging a function as a power holder. This is one way of one plane of analysis. The next way of analysis is private power holders among the private business, trade, voluntary organizations, individuals. I give a, you know, classified item to do something to do a business or to look for a house or you know rent something and power generator then there is another way so there are many ways of looking at it then there are power contenders and power generators all the political parties are appealing to the power generators media becomes a very very crucial platform so this is i am just loosening up our thought instead of a very abstract sense media media is there for watch and media does watch and media in its core what it is. So if I look at the functional to the philosophical to the structural part, there is private and government control, industrial houses, party control, independent media houses, I will still put a question mark there, monopoly ownership versus diversity of how media is held, global media versus national, national versus regional, regional versus local, I will even say a word traditional and modern that I will take it up in the last part. So when I really look at it, there are many, many ways a matrix can be built. So it cannot be one singular or a binary way of looking at media and its functions and what finally it does about finally media is about people. Media is about our lives. Media is about ourselves in a way. So if you look at that, it the what I call the algorithm becomes more and more complex. Now, when I disseminate the functional part, very interestingly, that is the structural part. 
naturally structure and function are connected. What is the kind of ownership which will have a connection? What is the kind of ideological disposition will have a connection? We may say that they are neutral. They are supposed to be equidistant. They are supposed to be not one-sided. Agree. And I wouldn't say except for a party-controlled media outfit, which many political parties have their own, what use, you use the word mouthpiece. We call it as mouthpiece, right? But they are, they, we don't expect them to tell about the other side view. But majority, what is not party control, we will say sometimes if it is industry control, if that particular group owning a media, something happens, they will not come out. So, but nevertheless, in a competitive world, they need to do breaking news. They have to do a few things, what is happening. So, there is also active medium and passive medium. What do you mean by active medium and passive medium? I, I only understand uh, uh, an anecdote once told by one of the, you all must be knowing, there was a famous uh, Shamal novelist and a script writer and science writer. His name is Sujata or is Rangarajan who's called Sujata. Is a, he's an iconic person, is no more. Very interesting. One time I read with what he said, I'm narrating to you, that he said uh, the, about media and its character. He said media is a personality and they have their own characteristic way of reacting. He gave this illustration, which is interesting to share with you. He said, suddenly one day, people came to a conclusion, the world will end today. This is now accepted by uh, what I call a scientist as well as astrologers. You know, both are very different people. So astrologers and scientists agreed, world is going to end within 48 hours. So that is 100%. So now world is going to end day after tomorrow. The next day, media paper has to come, newspaper has to come because it's a staple that. So what newspaper headline will be about the day after tomorrow, inevitable happening of the world ends? Sujata gives this example, interestingly, humorously. He says, Hindu paper says, day after tomorrow will the world end? Question mark. Our reporters will be on the field analyze and they will bring you an objective report by tomorrow evening which means a very very safe and a very very analytical a paper which wants to be very research based this was a joke on hindu then he says indian express says the world ends tomorrow will it simply says world ends tomorrow the prime minister should step down now last day for it because express supposed to be giving ultimatum to any establishment. Very interesting. Then he says, the third biggest, not the third, but the largest circulated, uh, I don't know about the stats now earlier, is Times of India, which says that world ends tomorrow, all classifieds 90% reduction, right? You can book your ad. So this is how he was trying to tell, for you to get a feel about media characterization and personality socio-political or entertainment push, ad-driven or value-driven, is it ideologically somewhere called as left of center or right of center? Or is it very pluralistic where everybody comes and writes something and everybody gets published? Is it information alone or is it a strong agenda-setting role? You know, it, it, these are the things which you need to put, I call that as a conundrum the structural and the functional part of media today. Or at least four theories they used to tell, authoritarian theory, libertarian theory, Soviet theory, social responsibility. I will not dwell much. There are a lot of media people who might have been attending this program today. They definitely must have been part of the syllabus. Authoritarian, it's, you know, these are all basically, uh, you find uh, governments, military takeover, maybe uh, erstwhile Iraq, or a Cuba or whatever. Or libertarian, again, there's a big question mark. There is something called free press theory, no restrictions. I really don't know. I have not come across no restrictions. Or there may be feeble attempts and experiments which might have died down, right? Media people to have complete freedom in the organization itself, no connection with the government and the media house, what you call it. It is like independent journalist group, etc. I'll come to that. There is a chance happening in this particular theory in the new media. I call that as social media. Now, the Soviet, forget it, call it China now. Instead of Soviet, maybe it's fitting. 
to propagate its own values, press as an instrument, Xinhua, you call it. It has got its own television, which, you know, which will tell that everything is okay with China, right? And then that is what the old theory, this is the old concept. The social responsibility theory is where many of us are desiring, but it's not happening. We all understand the failure of market-driven press in many ways. Government has the overriding authority when it is market-driven because uh, revenue models, many things, end of the day, whoever is maybe in the position of establishment, you have to listen to them. The social obligations of the media is never a discussion. It has to reflect the diversity. And this is where I call Ambedkar's clarion call came again to connect. He was lamenting. He was lambasting that the media is what the so-called, even those days, I'm telling not now, used to call that as Congress media because everybody knows uh, the independence movement. There was only one party, Congress party, which was, no, there were others who would have contributed, but as a political party, it was not even the today's Congress kind of thing, what we're talking. It's a kind of aspiration of many shades into Congress and the Congress and the lawyers and the press Everything was, you know, in tandem, bringing in freedom. So, but Ambedkar used to lambast Congress press, telling it's a very elite, caste-dominated press. It knows what news to come, what news not to come, what to be prioritized, what to be, you know, touched like a pickle, you know, in a food system like that, he used to lambast. But this is now not just expanding the issue of the marginalized of Dalit, we are going to add a lot in terms of gender, in terms of children. We are all talking. Today also my university had a program on human rights and human trafficking. We talk about migrants. You know, on pandemic we saw. We really, really see how many of this was part and parcel of pandemic. Nothing wrong in talking about vaccines. Nothing wrong about, you know, cautioning you. But what is the kind of balance? What is our priority? This is a... This is a great question. This is a very important question which lingers in every one of our mind. Nobody says, everybody loves media. But what is the type of media? That is the conundrum I keep talking. So Chomsky, Noam Chomsky, the greatest linguist you know, he talks about five filters. Concentrated ownership, owner's wealth, profit, advertising, all of this. Many of you are interested in this subject to read, to understand what law you should read that. And media and the third world, again, I want to tell that we are really thinking one way we say it's more objective. Many of my friends say, oh, no, no, I checked in BBC. No, no, I checked in CNN because they seem to be less biased also. They were talking. But what is the leading image? If you really look, you know, it is uh, all about what I call as co not just covering problems. There is no good things which are part of the agenda, because when you talk about a third world, we have to really talk about suffering and nothing else more. And that again, in a way, it is a distorted, you know, thing in a media conundrum. So these are the few agencies which, by and large, there's a huge, we, Ambedkar called it trade. Now it is a fantastic, an MBA level, you can even start MBA in media management. Media sell, media planner, media seller, media buyer, media product, you know, and add a technology into the whole thing, you really, really have got a juggernaut, I call it, called media. And then probably it, the fights could be very elitist in one way, but it is not about, you know, what you do or what they say when elephants fight, it is the grass which suffers. So in Indian context, very interesting, very quickly, I will conclude in 10, 15 minutes where we are, that print media was the greatest instrument for trade unions. Freedom struggle, I told. Later, communist parties, Dravidian parties in the south, recently Shiv Sena, RSS, and, you know, all the major parties, you know, Congress somewhere lost its, you know, own media platform moorings, but others have picked up. State and television were controlled, but now it's all open. But still, the point is you can have an indirect control because, as I told you, it's market driven. So, this is how. I want to do, but I want to go to the last part. There is, is there a light at the end of the tunnel? Is there a silver lining somewhere? We call that as social media. Social media, many definitions. I like this definition, which is very simple. 
It says really technologies that facilitate conversations. And what is social media conversation? All this. Of course, all are owned abroad, right? There is a feeble attempt from Indian side. Doesn't matter who owns it, but we consider there is a platform. So naturally, this is a different area of the old media. Or in other words, if I put it, radio, television, or print are passive technologies which broadcast beam information advertisement. There's only one way process that's called push technology. You don't really interact, react, and change what is given to you in the agenda. Whereas internet is called push pull technology, which means you could react, you can give your comment, you can blast some news, what happens, you can appreciate, you can depreciate whatever happens. Social media operates in that space. So is social media an extension of what we consider so long, the holy cow called the regular media? Right. What somebody said is a technology does not add or subtract. Or someone else said it allows people to get together, control own destiny. I would like another coach of political scientists who said it's imagined communities. No more you're looking kings or bishops, but you are in a mass literacy. We have horizontal ties. And one of the pinnacle was Lawrence Lessig, the pro acclaimed professor who says, online communities were transcending the limits of conventional states and predicted that members of these communities would find it difficult to stand neutral. So this is very much when a, a, a black person was, you know, uh, beaten and killed, you find simultaneous eruption everywhere and you really nowadays don't want to even see the television or paper we want to first check in the social media however it may be again another fun house of mirror we want to go do that why i'm for want of time this is the best thing happened in one way communicative easy to generate each one of us is a publisher each one of us could you know link with many people that makes social media very different in terms of structure, function of the old type media in a way. So if I put it, of course, acceptable, personal, political, we all deal in social media, health, humor. But of course, from a legal point of view, the problems are on defamation, false news, trolling, obscene, stalking, instigation of riots, coordination of criminal activities, infringement. But at the end of the day, the balance I will tell all of these are real issues to be tackled by some legal set of rules. But the greatest thing, which is social media. If I want to conclude, we are in the crossroads with the push technology, with an agenda giving away to push pull technology. Interestingly, the convergence of media known as ICT has opened up a new vista. We really don't know how far this is going to travel and, uh, you know, do. But let me tell you in one sense, uh, what you call as commemorating as I said, the dots, human rights, Ambedkar, constitution, social responsibility, which I told you, and voice of the voiceless. Is it media failed? I think you don't need a great essay to write to say the answer is yes in the last few decades. In, have they succeeded? If, if I succeeded or failed, they succeeded marginally. But if they have failed, steadily they are failing. In such case, is there a new hope? Let me put my closing remark. There was a film, which all of you know, was originally a Tamil scripted film in many languages. And what is this film about? It is typically a good movie maker knows the audience pulse. Normally he knows what is saleable. He knows where to touch because human emotions are mapped very much today. And anyone could really take up something. What is that? It comes to a genre of... You know, what is the journal? The journal is simple. Time immemorial. David versus Goliath, they call it. The oppressed versus the oppressor. This has been there, whether it's an individual family story between, you know, in a family or society everywhere. So you can say it is the same journal. But if I look at it internally, it is about a nomadic tribal people who others don't care about much about few percentage. Especially this, this they picked up one incident from a lawyer who turned judge, a quite a prominent figure in Chennai, Justice Chandru, 
and from there he narrated me this story uh, we also know because i used to some of us youngsters used to those days meet chandru and we are in touch we knew that is not something new to us it was there in print media also it was there everywhere this was discussed and then forgotten but again somebody picks it up of course a popular actor and then makes it so what happens this film in ott what they call was number one viewership in the world level that is the interesting point not just in tamil nadu or within that community are you are telling ambedkar and dalit you know not like that you suddenly you are touching the consciousness of a lot of people and that is the job end of the day of media to put somebody to uh, under you know uh, to see analyze grasp and react so you really what a print television radio could not do in a big way in a convergence new media i call i use the word ott because it comes to your home so that's very important going to a theater is not a easy job and a financially big job so you really find suddenly we are coming back to square one that is the new media or you call the social media it doesn't need the kind of structures of the the media what it became so complicated is it the one which is the hope so the concluding remark i would say the new social media is a first equalizer hope of equalizer if i am jumping the gun equalizer which does not require investments which in turn dictates the contours of returns on investment the moment i put investment then i am looking at return on investment i am tied up everywhere of the old media the challenge is will this be again brought under the command and control of dominant ideologies or will it herald the era of rediscovering the fourth pillar what you call the role of media the verdict is still not out thank you for your time thank you so much sir for brightening up this event with your presence and inspirational words sir uh, your words would certainly be a guiding factor for uh, each and every one of us Uh, dear participants, I like to invite your attention towards the chat box. If you have any questions directed towards sir, you can kindly type it there, and we will be addressing it. So, uh, one more thing, we like to inform all our participants that uh, the recordings of all the webinars that we have been doing is available to the public in the YouTube channel. So, all those who are interested can make use of it. So, we do have uh, two questions over here. One is from Krishna Prasad Kichu, and he is asking. how can we assure human rights for the minorities in the society it's it's slightly different from uh, what sir had addressed but still uh, he like to get your response for this question sir very if you ask a complex question in a simple answer if the majority is slow to behave properly automatically minorities will you know be treated properly because you know it is and as i said when uh, in a you know, humorous way but as i said that human beings are very complex carriers of you know memory we don't easily forget things and sometimes bad memory good memories good memories are always there for us and bad memories or bad ideologies also doesn't go so easily subconsciously so as i said attempts of constitution is constitutional discourse and protection is one way but implementing constitution is another way what the legal community has to take it up that's what the jay beam story is all about the jay beam story is about you know you forget about the controversy surrounding it that may be a different platform of you know other people criticizing but the point is simple that in fact i read an interesting story one boy says after seeing jay beam i wanted to pursue law as a profession i consider all along we i think you know all of us could be many guilty in national law schools why you want to do law because you will get a huge salary and you will be you will be one uh, celebrity like jit malani or nariman or somebody that's all we are telling here is a person who is telling about a lawyer struggle to put things that is his inspiration is telling so the trigger points could be many legal at least i am from the legal fraternity that's why i'm quoting jb it could be many ways ngos activists many thing but let me tell you it's a long haul it is not as i said it's not that easy as you said if if people are really sleeping you wake them up but if people are pretending to be sleeping you may not really you know get the things done 
So it's a very complex question. As I said that, I would even say, very interestingly, I would say justice, life is one hell of a journey of justice and injustice. Interestingly, both of us use the same legal system to perpetuate injustice and to fight for justice. We don't have two parallel, you know, think that they are using something, we are using something. So, as I said, to expect, you know, everything is fantastic and we get up every day morning with, uh, you know, uh, a fantastic thing the whole day. That is not part of the mysterious uh, life which we are living in the planet. But the point is very simple. There have been movement forward. This whole human rights was never even a discussion or a discourse or a concept about even few decades back. You all know after World War II only some rudiments of human rights is coming. Prior to that, might was right. You do what you want if you succeed. If you capture, do what you like. But slowly we are doing, as I said, it's it it'll you move forward, you come back, you move forward. And but I would say there is there is definitely enough discussion, rationale that why this is the way forward. Right? We may have differences in the way forward. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for that. We have yet another question from Sandeep, sir, and sir is asking. So what is your perspective on journalism funded by the public through YouTube channels like the print and uh, or news laundry? Are they relatively independent and significant enough to revolutionize media? Sure, that's what I hinted in my last thing. I used film as a uh, OTT and things like that as a convergence model. But as I said, the word independent, uh, some of them who are mainstream, uh, you know, celebrity journalists have started their own you know thing on edition they often ask you like the print or the wire or few of them have come independently they even ask your small support to do because they don't have a very big string of investment or other pressures of their what i call as investors being part of an industry and you are part of industry then you have other issues with an establishment all these are all not there but as i said that was at least a refreshing thing what is happening today that allows to an extent for you to come to terms with what could be the real picture. Sometimes you get completely thoroughly confused when you see mainstream media, two different medias talking two different stuff altogether. And so that is that is the that is the problem. I said the media ownership. But today, when this you said this, and independent blogs, many other things see we I am looking a lot of uh, you know, legal blogs, etc. It definitely, definitely what you call as keeping the hope alive. How it is going to turn out, I am not a clairvoyant on that. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for uh, clarifying that. We have yet another question from Devi Chandanayas, and she's asking, so social media has its own advantages and disadvantages. We hear a lot about it every day. So what can be done save the present and future generations from its ill effects? See, that's what I said. It's a package. As I said, law itself or technology itself is not created for this or that. So naturally, that's what I said. People might jump into the bandwagon. The whole question I said about trolling, uh, you know, the whole thing about uh, that's what the worry is. Will again social media be turned out to a different type of ownership or the whole all whole uh, you know way you are looking at uh, then people have to look at about uh, how much control these platforms are owned by people at least in the world you know five six behemoths control all this right whether it's a microsoft whether it's a facebook whether it's google how far we have to legally see that they don't go beyond a point where what Noam Chomsky long back wrote, manufacturing concern. There was one of his you know, famous work that a concern can be manufactured from you if I properly, what you call as, put any technology or any content. So that is a big worry. Uh, we, we competition law, antitrust, many people are looking how much these people can, you know, can they be good enough to leave the platform for others to interact and come or they will be done. And this is very crucial when governments are talking about control over social media. What is the intention? 
what is the agenda how far it is justified to what level you need to really do the ill effects or in other words not throwing the baby out of the bath water that is very very crucial when it comes to social media legislations which uh, even uh, you know twitter all of them are in the courts now talking about the latest legislations brought it is not to tell that social media is everything is great and it's fantastic it has driven people to suicide it has really demolished people we have seen that we have seen that many assaults right and you and i could have been a victim one or the other way so the question is uh, it's not a package of good or bad binary so we need to really again use law to judiciously to see that uh, you know that that old concept of freedom of expression as done in the constitution is kept alive thank you so much